Today I'm going to take these 20 18650 lithium iron cells and I'm going to turn them into one pack, a 20P, 20 cells in parallel. Uh, and that's going to make up one seventh of my 7S lithium ion pack, which will be solar charged here in the solar shed. So job number one is to move the cells over to this holder and that's because I've already drilled some 5mm holes in this uh, 4x5 18650 holder and uh, the reason for that will become apparent later but for the meantime I'll just move all these over, some of which uh, will be easier than others. These uh, seem a bit wider, those uh, darker orange Sanyo cells. Anyway, I'll move them all across. There we have it, all 20 moved across, and I'll just uh, tidy these up a little bit so at least on the outside of the pack it looks reasonably neat. Actually, I've not done a bad job there, but why these 20? Well, in a previous video, I took all my 140 plus cells and uh, placed them into repacker.com, and this was the combination that it came out after I'd tested each and every single one of these cells, 2,615 milliamp hours in this one. Um, it grouped them together to make the most even packs possible. Um, so there they are, that's the 20 that make up pack uh, seven with that scribbled note on there. So uh, let's just drop a top on there, push that down and there we have it. We have a pack ready to wire up with all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the other uh, because this is just going to be a nominal 3.7 volt pack. Now I made it clear in a previous video that I was uh, basically going to steal Pete from uh, HB Powerwall's idea of wiring these up. So if we just move that to the side and get rid of that, I'm using this as my bus bar. This is 2.5mm uh, domestic cable here in the UK, a brown and a blue for live and neutral, and then a thinner 1.5mm earth in the middle but I'm uh, not using the earth for this particular project so I need to get those two cores out of this uh, grey insulation here. Now with the two cores removed from the outer insulation I can strip these and as I've shown in a previous video I uh, came up with this and 3D printed a uh, device to strip the cable and this has been an absolute godsend it really does make short work of stripping this cable now i have shown the process of stripping this cable in a previous video but uh, a few people have commented and asked me if i would show the full process of soldering up a pack so uh, well this is that video so uh, now i've got my copper here i need to uh, twist it because i'd prefer to have uh, this doubled so uh, now I just need to get one end and the other together and then we just need to uh, twist it together. Now the very simple method I've been using in the shed is to uh, fold over the uh, lengths of copper here, tighten them up in my drill and uh, hook them over a hook here in the shed and then we can just go twist until it feels well about right and uh, that does the job there we go we've got one twisted copper bus bar once that's been completed i can uh, measure the bus bar here and mark the center so the center is there now with that center point marked i can use this jig i've made which is just a few nails in a piece of wood and uh, that will allow me to put the uh, bus bar in those uh, nails this is the center point I'm aligning with and uh, then I can just bend the copper around the nails I'll probably extend it a little bit too far there just to make sure it's going to uh, bend nicely and uh, yeah that will bend roughly like that and then we can get move to the top here and again holding the rest of the copper bend uh, the top two bits into shape and uh, yeah that's not too bad it's uh, not quite straight but I'm sure I can 
fix that later but this is the uh, basic shape right now with the uh, copper bus bar in place uh, as you can see i've uh, drawn these lines across this jig as well and they uh, should roughly line up with the center of each cell there perhaps uh, that's not so obvious at this point but uh, i was a little bit worried about actually soldering these bus bars because there's quite a lot of copper there uh, but my uh, soldering iron seems to be coping with that quite well i have put quite a large tip on it and i've uh, turned it up to about 360 degrees which is reasonably high but actually i found if we uh, just tin the tip a bit place it on the bus bar there just to get um the heat um, moving over there to the bus bar add a bit more solder and that soldered perfectly well and there's enough solder there for me to uh, place my fuse on there so uh, i'll just carry on now and of course this gets easier as you move along because the copper's heating up and obviously it transfers the heat along its length quite well so uh, this gets quicker and quicker and quicker the more of these uh, solder preparation little jobs that you do so uh, i'll just crack on with this little job so before the copper gets too cold now that i've done all that soldering i've got my uh, five amp fuse wire here which is taken from a card of 5 15 and 30 amp domestic fuse wire and uh, let's do this one first if i just um place the uh, wire across the bus bar I can uh, heat that up nicely, give it a few seconds, and make a reasonable joint there, which I might come back and add a bit more solder to later, but now I've got a spare hand again, I can add a bit of solder, pop a bit more in there, and uh, that fuse wire is now soldered across my bus bar. That's not too bad and then uh, well i'll just cut off the excess and uh, move on to the next one so there we have the fuse wire attached to the bus bar and of course by heating up the bus bar and pre-tinning it beforehand uh, helps make sure that you can get a good electrical connection between the fuse wire and the bus bar and i think they're all pretty good actually so uh, hopefully that's going to work all right now, of course, this is just the bus bar for one half of the pack, so uh, I'll just solder up the other one as well. So now I have two bus bars completed with their fuses already soldered on. And this next bit is the bit that I found the most annoying of the process. I've decided to use zip ties or cable ties uh, to not only hold the bus bars on, but actually hold the whole pack together. You'll remember those holes from earlier. So uh, those holes there, um, they, well, I can put a cable tie through that hole relatively easily just uh, sort of thread it through there and uh, then it pops out of the top um, I'll get my bus bar with those fuses and then I'll fold that back round again and back through and this is the annoying bit getting that cable tie back out of the bottom again is well it's possible but it's really, really annoying and tricky. So uh, I'll definitely be doing that bit off camera. Now with the tie wrap job completed, you can see that the tie wrap goes over this bus bar in four different places, through the pack and then over the other bus bar. So this is holding the whole thing together and uh, keeping it all uh, connected and those bus bars aren't moving either. So now I'm able to solder all the fuses onto the cells. Now uh, I have checked each of these cells is all sat at roughly the same voltage so uh, um, no current will flow between the cells because obviously as I start to connect them up if one of these was particularly low and one particular high uh, current would flow between the two cells and potentially blow the fuse that I'm trying to solder but that shouldn't be a problem because all my cells are at the same voltage right before I solder this row of cells let's put a bit of flux here and uh, I'm going to solder the wire 
to the cell all at the same time no messing around with pre-tinning or anything this time and with a reasonably clean solder tip let's apply a bit of solder pop it down here the sizzle from the flux and solder onto that cell and i think that's enough i think i'm only in contact with the cell for what three seconds four at most perhaps and that is enough obviously doing the positive side is an awful lot easier because the positive uh, side of the cell here is just a thin piece of metal um, but the negative side is a little bit more tricky but uh, well we'll move on to doing that in a second now i've soldered all the outer fuses so here i need to cut this wire so that i can solder the inner cells as well and finally i'll just tidy up these uh, last bits of fuse wire uh, the excess as it were some longer than others and uh, then i think that's the uh, positive side completed and the negative side is much the same as the positive side i just uh, flux the cells here and i was a little bit nervous about this because everybody said well they've got a lot of heat mass and you might need to apply the heat for a long time uh, but in my experience that isn't the case so i'll uh, do the same as before add a bit to the iron burn off that flux add the solder and that's it done i don't think i'm putting too much heat into those cells whatsoever now it could be because i'm using flux and leaded solder and uh, iron at 350 degrees that's got a reasonable amount of uh, heat mass in it or it could be i don't know the tempo at which i'm doing it the time at which i'm taking or i'm wondering whether it's because i've left some of the nickel strip on my cells there because actually that might give a better surface to solder to than the actual surface of the cell itself either way as you can see i'm not holding the soldering iron on the cell for very long and i'm managing to solder my fuses onto the negative part of the cell and that's cold i mean i can touch that just a couple of seconds later so uh, if this is doing any damage whatsoever to these cells well i can only imagine it's a tiny tiny bit and this pack is almost complete all that remains is for me to take the uh, loop off the end of the bus bar there we go and uh, well i'm going to need to put one of these crimp terminals on but i need to determine exactly how long i need these to be so uh, i'll wait for another day to do that i need to uh, work out the next pack and make sure they all fit together but this is the uh, negative side here so i'll put some black heat shrink tubing on these two bus bars here and uh, well when it's actually built into a pack hopefully that will keep it a little bit safer and with that lug on there i'll be able to connect it to the next pack in the row number six um i guess this is number seven will it go on that side or this uh, well anyway it doesn't matter for this video i think i've now created a pack so uh yeah i think that should work quite nicely now what i need to remember now is these are all quite delicate these fuses and easily broken if not so i'll definitely store them on their side like that well that's it hopefully this has been useful to you if you're looking to make some packs like this as well even if it's because you think my method is absolutely ridiculous and uh, too time consuming Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.